All right, let's derive the formula for the area of a circle. We're going to start with talking about circumference and diameter. Um, diameter is the length from one side to the next. And it has to cross through this center point right here. The circumference is the length all the way around this black line or I'm drawing a red circle the length all the way around that is the circumference and something cool happens when we take the circumference divided by diameter it doesn't matter if it's this large circle up top or this small circle on the bottom circumference divided by diameter is the same number it's an irrational number, about 3.1415, and it goes on forever, and it doesn't repeat itself, so it's hard to write. Because it's an irrational number hard to write, we assigned it the Greek letter pi. Now, let's do a little math with circumference and diameter. I'm just going to replace the words with symbols, so C divided by D equals pi. Next, I'm going to write it as a fraction, so it helps with our next step, because we're going to times both sides by D. And we do that because it cancels out these Ds on the left-hand side. This leaves us with C is equal to pi times D, pi times diameter. Now, we could stop there, but most textbooks go a little bit further, and they add in the radius. Diameter is equal to 2 times the radius. The radius is a line from the center all the way to the outside line. And we can just replace D with 2R. This just makes things a little bit easier for us later on, and it's typically how you see it. And in fact, we normally rearrange it and just say 2 times pi times R. So circumference is equal to 2 pi R. Now, remember I said we're talking about area. I did this first because we need this formula for later on. Well, let's shift gears and talk more about area. First, we're going to inscribe this blue hexagon inside of the circle and see if we can find the area of this blue hexagon. So first, I'm going to split it up into six triangles, six regular triangles. And we all know that the area of a triangle is one half times base times height. Now, like I said, the base is going to be one side of the triangle, and then the height is going to be from the center out to the side. That's how you find the area for one of these triangles. But again, there are six of these triangles. So to find the area of the hexagon, we're just going to take one half times base times height and multiply it by six. But notice that we didn't find the area of the circle, we found the area of a hexagon. So this time I'm going to inscribe a bigger polygon, I'm going to inscribe a decagon inside the circle. Notice that there's less white space. There's still some white space, so we don't have the area of the circle, but we have an area of a bigger polygon that fits it a little bit more. So instead, we have 10 triangles with still the base being the side of the triangle and the height being from the middle up to the side. So I'm going to change hexagon to decagon. And I'm going to change the 6 to a 10, because now we have 10 triangles. We can extrapolate this further to say, just for any polygon, all we have to do to change the formula is change the number of sides. So I replace the 6 and the 10 with n for the number of sides of whatever polygon we decide to choose, or whatever polygon we decide to write into the circle. We do this because we want to make less and less white space until we cover the whole circle. We need to keep building polygons until we reach that perfect circular um, area. So we have, instead of area of polygon, we have area of circle. And notice that our height 
is going to change to our radius because we're going from the center all the way out to the side, center all the way out to the side. That's called our radius. So now we're going to be working, anytime we're working with the area circle, we're doing in times a half times space times radius. Let's back up a little bit and start with area of the polygon. So here we have a decagon, but it could be any polygon we choose. The formula is going to be in times a half times space times height. And just because it's multiplication, I'm going to rearrange it a little bit. I'm going to say in times space times height times one half times height. We can replace in times the base with the perimeter. For this polygon, if I take the base or one side times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I get the perimeter of that polygon. But now we want to find the area of the circle. So if I extrapolate my polygon out to the perfect circle, what's the perimeter of a circle called? Right. It's called the circumference. So now for the area of the circle, we have P is replaced with C, perimeter is replaced with circumference, and our height, it's now a circle, is replaced with R, our radius. So the area of a circle is equal to C times a half times R. Now remember the formula we did at the beginning? We can replace circumference with two times pi times R. And with a little math, we're going to cancel out these twos and do r times r, and we get the area of the circle is pi r squared.